Okay, so today's been a busy day. Got the bad boy out here doing a lot of work. Mini X has been doing a lot of work as well, moving the pile, kind of transitioning it so I can scoop it up easier in the uh, bad boy. And we have pretty much a circular driveway carved out of all of this. This uh, was a two week project only because one day I used 100 feet of the geotextile wrap or fabric and then I had to wait for another shipment to come in, but we knocked it out in two working days. But yeah, over here, works out real well. Now I have a place to park the truck, keep it off the driveway so the driveway is more accessible. Plus I keep the tractor in the garage so I need a clear path to get it in and out of there without having to squeeze by the truck all the time. This little area in the center, we may sod it. We may try to water it and just see if it takes off again because it's got some St. Augustine going through here and uh, it might just need a good watering and some fertilizer. You know, through all this work, none of my three deer ran away. It's crazy. They just stayed there petrified like they were curious about the whole thing. Then we have it coming out this way and then going off this way. We're going to probably put some type of an edging around it, whether it's pavers or small blocks. I'm probably not going to use plastic or rubber only because it's likely to get ran over. I have to shape it over here a little bit, but once we get the edging down, it'll give us a solid barrier to go up against. The uh, geotextile wrap that I used, I actually got off of Amazon. It's not a fabric material. It's more like a, more like a tarp, but water can get through it. So... You know, it should be okay for drainage while at the same time preventing weed growth because, yeah, the stuff we got over there was really expensive. Um, it's really a stabilizing fabric, but it really didn't stop weeds from getting through it at all. So we constantly are, am applying weed and grass killer to that area to kind of keep all the vegetation under control. But right here, everything's looking really good. Went through three 14 cubic yard loads of reclaimed asphalt this was a lot cleaner than the material that they delivered over there the material over there had tons of huge chunks in it this one still had its fair share but not as much and the material that we could use seemed to be a lot looser you know a little bit easier to spread out so looks really good i'm going to grab the excavator real quick and try to scoop all of this into an easy to grab pile so i can get a couple more loads here but this is pretty much it turned out really good really happy with it and the main reason we did this as opposed to just you know letting it run out uh, well i guess that's one reason we didn't want it just to run out but the main reason is because when it gets really windy here it blows all this sand all this stuff just straight into you straight into your face it actually blows hard enough sometimes that it actually stings you so this right here is a heavier material it's larger pieces of aggregate so it should hold down a lot better and there's an area right over here just with the sun hitting it you could tell that it, it kind of melted into place a little bit and it's not moving so yeah it's actually made a huge difference today because we had a lot of wind today and just even this project was less dusty even considering we were moving this stuff around so very pleased with the reclaim very pleased how well it's working um, over there in terms of staying in place you know the the cloth or the fabric really what controls what grows through it but I think this material is going to be a lot better. And again, we have it all over there, wrap, wrapping around here. We even cut pieces over here. We cut pieces right here, and it goes straight into that area back here. So once we get the edging material in place, it should work really well, and it should be a really nice little parking area for whenever we have cars here, whenever I park my truck over here, um, and whenever I drive over into this area right here. But yeah, very pleased with it. Okay, so I got the truck parked in the place where I want it now. Again, I still got to kind of finish all this off. Once we put the trim around here, we'll be able to uh, kind of set all of the reclaim up against it. Everything's looking really good. Use the mini excavator to kind of move some of the pile there so I have some extra material just whenever we put the trim here so it can kind of butt up against it. Got to pick some dead grass out of it. Pretty much leveled it all off. You can see where I drove my truck through it and it compressed it, so it's actually an idea. I just drive the truck around this several times and should be able to compress most of it. You know, Reclaim, it's a great low-cost alternative to 
you know, asphalt or to uh, chip seal, things like that. Chip seal is essentially where they put like a pea gravel down and then they go over it with a tar or they put a tar down and go over it with a uh, pea gravel. I've seen both ways of doing it. Then I've seen another one where they put um, this type of material down, then they put a chip seal on top of it. Um, this is probably the cheapest of any of the alternative asphalt type solutions. But what I like about this is it is very, very easy to do for just a regular homeowner. If you just want to do it yourself, you want to get something put down, something that is going to get arguably better over time, this is probably the best solution. Um, it's not perfect and it's nowhere near perfect. I mean, I would much rather do an asphalt solution here or chip seal probably, or even concrete, but those are very, very expensive. And quite frankly, because we do plan on modifying some more things around here, I don't want anything that's gonna be permanent. That's probably the key behind all of this is we don't want anything that's permanent for now. Right now, we just want something that's gonna allow us to travel around here a little bit smoother, um, with less wear and tear on the yard per se. And uh, quite frankly, this works really well. But you know, at the same time, it's not as inexpensive as I thought it would be. You know, the material that we're throwing in the pond, that clay material, it was about $200 for a dump truck load, which is about 14 yards. Uh, the, the reclaimed asphalt, this stuff right here, this stuff was like $325 for a truckload. So it's more expensive. This right here is the recycled asphalt that came from a road that was resurfaced. So whenever you see them resurfacing your roads in your city and they're ripping up all the old stuff, this is what they're doing with it. They're selling it as reclaim to somebody who uh, who can come pick it up. And they might possibly just be giving it to the, the actual aggregate yard, the provider, and then they're essentially hauling it off and they're charging you, you know, what they feel it's worth to uh, deliver it to you. But... Who knows? Of the choices I had available to me, this was the best at the lowest price. There were other things I could have done, but again, this is probably the best for the price that uh, that I was willing to pay to get this done. But yeah, I was able to uh, knock most of this out in a very short period of time with help from the excavator, with help from the... Uh, the bad boy tractor. That tractor has been phenomenal. For those of you who said, yeah, that thing's going to break down on you after five hours, or it's made in South Korea, so it's junk, um, or it's made by the same company that makes TYN, or, you know, all these different things. The reality is that tractor has been rock solid. I've had zero issues with it. Um, I grease it about once every two weeks. We have 23 hours on it, which I know isn't an incredible number of hours for it, but it's all been hard work. I mean, everything we've done with it is moving a lot of dirt around, moving a lot of sand around, moving heavy stuff around. It's not just pulling like a box blade or something like that. It's It's been put to work and it has not given us one single issue. It's been awesome. Um, you know, I'll come back and you know, report how it's been doing after 100 hours, after 200 hours, but, you know, something tells me it's going to be a while before I get there. Um, on this, believe it or not, I've already passed 20 hours on it. Well, let me take that back. It had like four hours when I got it, so I've passed like 16 hours on it, something like that, 15 hours on it, somewhere in that range. But, um, yeah, this has over 20 hours on it now. I've been putting as much time behind the controls as possible, and I've been getting more comfortable. I mean, things are just easier to do now. I don't have to think about it as hard. I don't have to figure it out. Occasionally, I get caught in that little brain fart where you're trying to do something, and then you just for that brief second forget what the controls do and, and you end up doing something just kind of crazy or you end up moving too quickly and you know those of you who have been operating these for years and years and years 20 30 years do you occasionally do that as well i'd love to know like do you swing it too fast on accident one time or do you hit the thumb button the wrong way and you close the thumb when you want to open it i mean what are little things that you do even though you're super familiar with this and same with the tractor what are some of those things that you do and i think some of it just comes from complacency you you've done it so long and you feel like there's no way you can make a mistake or it's just muscle memory, but then you just have a brain fart and something weird happens and you, you spin the cab around too quickly or you open the bucket too quickly, or you close it too quickly, or you mean to you know extend the boom or raise the boom or lower it and you do it wrong. I mean, what are some weird things that happen you know, after you've operated one of these for a long time? Because I'm sure you know not everybody stays you know an expert at these all the time and never does anything wrong. I'd love to know. Leave some stories below. You know, I asked folks about highballing stories with trailers. Uh, how many folks have accidentally lowered the uh, coupler onto the, the ball 
without it actually coupling. And I got so many stories. I mean, I got tons of stories from people who have, you know, honestly made the mistake. They've done it themselves. Somebody that they know has done it. But, you know, people were really honest about that. I'd love to know. Those of you who operate, you know, heavy equipment, what's something you've done? What's some kind of mess up that you've done? And you're like, oh, man, I should have known better. I've been doing this for so long. How could I have made that mistake? Leave a comment below. I'd love to know. Anyways, guys, we're going to wrap this project up for today. Probably the next time you see me kind of focus on this, we're going to have the, the edging going around it so we can kind of finish this off completely. Um, so far, I'm, I'm very pleased with it. You know, it butts right up against the uh, driveway area very well on both sides. Uh, you know, for the part that we had completed last week, it was very hard, actually. It was it was compacted in rather well. So when I was uh, going over it, kind of leveling it with the front blade of the tractor, you could tell it was compacted in there, which is really nice. And that's what we're looking for. And that's one really great thing about having super, super hot, sunny days in South Texas is that it makes stuff like this function like it's regular asphalt being applied with, you know, uh, asphalt crew, I guess. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you've enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.